Awarding is the process of setting grade boundaries or deciding how many marks are needed in order to achieve a given grade, which we do after the exams have been marked. Now, grade boundaries move around year to year. That's normal because as much as we try to set papers of the same standard every year, inevitably they end up being a little more or a little less difficult. So grade boundaries will often be slightly higher or lower than the previous year to reflect that and make sure that students aren't disadvantaged. Now, the awarding process involves a committee of senior examiners who look at statistical evidence and also scrutinise a selection of exam scripts to see just how students have actually performed in practice. Now, those awarding committees are guided by the principle of comparable outcomes. And that's the principle that a student should get the same grade this year that they would have got if they'd sat last year's paper. Now that means that, all else being equal, we would expect this year's national outcomes to look similar to last year's. Now, all else being equal is a really important phrase in that sentence. And that's why we use Key Stage 2 data for GCSE awarding or GCSE data for A-level awarding to tweak the statistical predictions to reflect the ability of the cohort. So that means that while we're looking to carry over the standard from last year, if we have, say, a slightly more able cohort than last year, then there will be slightly more top grades available. And we tweak the statistics that the awarding committee use in order to make sure that that's the case. Now, all else being equal also assumes that students' performance is consistent from one year to the next. If there's evidence that performance has significantly improved or worsened from last year, then senior examiners can see that on the scripts they look at, and they can take that into account when deciding where to set the grade boundaries. So why do we use this comparable outcomes approach? Well, it's particularly important at a time of reform in order to ensure fairness for students. Now, there's two main reasons for that. One is, for the reformed GCSEs particularly, that there's an explicit policy intention to increase demand. So we want to make sure that students aren't disadvantaged because of that. The other reason is something that we call the sawtooth effect. Now that's a technical assessment term, but what it talks about is a recognised phenomenon in assessment that's well documented in the research literature. And it essentially shows how student performance changes over the lifetime of a specification. So in the first year, what tends to happen is that student performance drops off a little bit. It's a new specification, teachers are less familiar with it, there might be less in the way of support materials and past papers available. So you see a slight drop off in performance. And then, over the following years, performance creeps up year on year as teachers and students become more familiar with the requirements of the specification and assessments. Then, at the next point of reform, performance drops off again. So hence you see what we call a sawtooth effect. Now this is really the key reason why comparable outcomes is so important to ensure fairness at the point of reform. Because it ensures that that first cohort of students, where we know their performance is likely to be a little bit lower, are not penalised just because they happen to be the first cohort to sit that qualification. Now in practice, how that usually ends up playing out is with grade boundaries that are likely to be slightly lower in the first year of a new qualification than they were in the last year of the reformed specification. So that ensures that students are protected, that they will get the same grade that they would have got if they'd sat the old specification, but taking into account that increase in demand and the fact that performance is going to be a little bit lower in the first year.